Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning the basics of chemical reactions. So what is a chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is when you have two reactants that form a new substance called the product. They form this product by colliding in the correct orientation and with enough energy to form the new substance. There are two types of change that can occur. There is physical change and chemical change. If we look at physical change, this is when you have a change of state. So you do not create a new substance, but you change the form. So for example, if we go from a solid to a gas, it's called sublimation. We still have the same substance, but we have changed the state. If we go from a solid to a liquid, it is called melting. From a liquid to a gas is boiling, from a gas to a liquid is condensing, and from a liquid to a solid is freezing. All of these processes do not create a new substance and are hence called a physical change. A chemical change is different. A chemical change occurs because a new substance has been created through a chemical reaction. The things you might observe include a colour change, a gas being produced, a precipitate being produced, which is a solid, or energy being released. Energy can be released in the form of thermal energy, so heat, or light, or sound. When considering energy, a reaction can be described as exothermic or endothermic. Exothermic reactions are when heat is released to the surroundings and the reaction would feel hot to touch. Endothermic reactions is when the reaction takes energy in from the surroundings and it would feel cold to touch. During chemical reactions, the atoms and substances called reactants are rearranged to form new substances called products. In this process, energy is transferred. If we take the example of magnesium reacting with oxygen, which happens through combustion or burning, you would see that the atoms on the reactant side are simply rearranged to form the new substance or product on the right hand side. In this case, this is magnesium oxide. There are two ways that we can represent what happens during a chemical reaction. The first way is through a word equation. And this is where we use the names of the reactants and products to show what occurred in the equation. For example, if we had calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid, it would produce carbon dioxide, calcium chloride and water. All we have done is use the names of the reactants and products to show what has occurred. The second way to represent what occurs in a chemical reaction is by using a symbol equation. This is where we use the elemental symbols to represent the reactants and products. If we consider our previous example where calcium carbonate reacted with hydrochloric acid to make carbon dioxide, calcium chloride and water, what we would have to do is find the elemental symbols from the periodic table to then change the word equation into a symbol equation. This is shown below. In chemistry, there is a very important law called the law of conservation. This states that atoms cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. What this means is that we must always have the same number of atoms on the reactant side as we do on the product side. If we don't, then the equation becomes unbalanced. In this case here, we have two orange atoms on the left hand side, or the reactant side, and only one on the right. So we would need to add in another atom to ensure that the equation is balanced. When we have the same number of atoms on both sides, then we have a fully balanced equation. There are four major steps to writing a symbol equation. The first step is to identify the reactants and products and then turn this into a word equation. The next step is to turn the word equation into an unbalanced formula equation and then finally to balance that formula equation. Let's go through an example of how to write a balanced symbol equation. We will start with the steps to writing a word equation. If we consider the chemical reaction between sodium and water, this reaction forms hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide. The first step is to identify the reactants and products. In this case, the reactants are sodium and water. The products are shown to be hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide. 
What we then do is turn this into a word equation. The reactants are represented on the left hand side of the arrow and the products are represented on the right hand side of the arrow. Let's consider our previous example of the chemical reaction between sodium and water. We developed the following word equation. The next step is to replace the names of each substance in the word equation with their elemental symbols or chemical formulas. Pause the video and have a go at this. What we find is that sodium is represented by Na, water has the formula H2O, sodium hydroxide has the formula NaOH and hydrogen gas has the formula of H2. The next step is to balance this equation. What we will do is represent the atoms of these reactants and products with circles. On the left hand side you can see that sodium is pink, hydrogen is purple and oxygen is green. If we show all of the reactants and products, we can see that we are unbalanced. We have three purples on the product side and only two on the reactant side. So what we'll do is we'll add a two in front of the sodium hydroxide. This means that everything within that formula is multiplied by two. So the sodium is, the oxygen is, and so is the hydrogen. This is represented by the following atoms being added. What we're going to do is group all of our purples together so we know how many atoms of hydrogen we have overall. As you can see, we have four. This is a problem because on the reactant side, we only have two. So we're going to add a two in front of the water molecule. Again, this means that we've got two lots of two, which is four hydrogens in total, and then two lots of oxygen. We always place the number outside or in front of the substance that we want it to apply to. We cannot change the small subscript number, for example, this two, because that changes what substance you actually have. As we can see, our hydrogens are now balanced and our oxygens are now balanced. However, our sodiums are unbalanced. We have two on the product side and one on the reactant side. Therefore, we will add a two in front of the sodium on the reactant side. And now you can see we have a completely balanced equation. We follow the law of conservation and have the same number of atoms on the reactant side as we do on the product side.